Hello and welcome to the session of RPC messages, marshalling arguments and results. At the end of this session, student will be able to uniquely identify RPC messages, marshalling arguments and results. RPC messages. RPC system is independent of transport protocols and is not concerned as to how a message is passed from one process to another. Any remote procedure call involves a client process and a server process that are possibly located on different computers. The mode of interaction between the client and server is that the client asks the server to execute a remote procedure call and the server returns the two types of messages involved in the implementation of an RPC system. RPC messages, the call message and reply message. Call message that are sent by the client to the server for requesting execution of a particular remote procedure. The reply messages are sent by the server to the client for returning the result of a remote procedure execution. The protocol of the concerned RPC system defines the format of these two types of messages. As we know, an RPC protocol is independent of transport protocols, which means that RPC does not care how a message is passed from one process to another. Therefore, an RPC protocol deals only with the specification and interpretation of these two types of messages. Since a call message is used to request execution of a particular remote procedure, the two basic components or fields are necessary in the call messages. The first one is the identification information of the remote procedure to be executed. And the second field is the arguments necessary for the execution of procedure. In addition of these two fields, a call message normally has some other fields which are below. A message identification field that consists of a sequence number. This field is useful in two ways for identifying lost of messages and duplicate messages in case of system failure and for properly matching reply messages to outstanding call messages, especially in those cases where the replies of several outstanding calls messages arrive out of order. The fourth field is a message type field that is used to distinguish call messages from reply messages. For example, in RPC system, this field may be set to 0 for all call messages and set to 1 for all reply messages. A client identification field that may be used for two purposes to allow the server of the RPC to identify the client to whom the reply message has to be written or sent and to allow the server to check the authentication of the client process for executing the concerned procedure. Second is reply message. Now when the server of an RPC receives a call message from a client, it could be faced with the following conditions. In the list below, it is assumed for particular condition that no problem was detected by the server for any of the previously listed conditions. The first condition is that the server finds that the call message is not intelligible to it. This may happen when a call message violates the RPC protocols. Obviously, the server will reject calls without bothering to make an attempt to execute the procedure. The second is the server detects by scanning the client's identifier field that our client is not authorized to use the service. The server will return an unsuccessful reply message without bother bothering to make any attempt to execute the procedure. The third condition is the server finds that the remote program version or procedure number specified in the remote procedure identifier field of the call message is not available with it. Again, the server will return an unsuccessful reply 
without bothering to make an attempt to execute the procedure the fourth is if the the, uh, the if the stage is reached or come an attempt will be made to execute the remote procedure specified in the call message therefore it may happen that the remote procedure is not able to decode supplied arguments this may happen due to an incompatible rpc interface being used by the client and server an exception condition such as divisible by zero occurs while executing the specified remote procedure call and the last condition is that the specified remote procedure is executed successfully now a reply message obviously in the first five cases an unsuccessful reply has to be sent the client with the reason for failure in processing the request and a successful reply has to be sent in the sixth case with the result of procedure execution therefore the format of a successful reply message and an unsuccessful reply message is normally slightly different a typical rpc reply message format for successful and unsuccessful reply may be form of this particular the message identifier field of a reply message is the same as that of its corresponding to call messages so that a reply message can be properly matched with its call message the message type field is properly set to indicate that it is a reply message for successful reply the reply status field is normally set to 0 and is followed by the field containing the result of procedure execution for an unsuccessful reply message the reply status field is either set to 1 or to a non zero value to indicate failure in the latter case the value of the reply status field indicates the types of error however in either case normally a short statement describing the reason for failure is placed in a separate field following the reply status field since rpc protocols are generally independent of transport protocols it is not possible for an rpc protocol designer to fix the maximum length of call and reply now marshalling arguments and results implementation of remote procedure calls involves the transfer of arguments from the client process to the server process and the transfer of results from server process to the client process these arguments and results are basically language level data structures such as program objects which are transferred in the form of message data between the two computers involved in the call we know that transfer of message data between two computers require encoding and decoding of the message data for rpc this operation is known as marshalling and basically involves the following actions the first one taking arguments arguments from client process or the result from the server process that will form the message data to be sent to the remote process encoding the message data of step 1 the sender computers this encoding process involves the conversion of program objects into a stream from that is suitable for transmission and placing them into a message buffer decoding of message data on the receiver's computer this decoding process involves the reconstruction of a program objects from the message data that was received in stream form in order that encoding and decoding of rpc messages can be performed successfully the order and the representation method used to marshal arguments and results must be known to both the client and the server of the rpc this provides a degree of, of type safety between a client and server because the server will not accept a call from a client until the client uses the same interface definition as the server type safety is of particular importance to servers since it allows them to survive against corrupt call request the marshalling process must reflect the structure of all types of program objects used in the concerned language these include primitive types structure types 
and user defined types marshaling procedure classified into two groups the first one those provided as a part of rpc software normally marshaling procedure for scalar data types together with procedures to marshal compound types built from the scalar one fall in this group the second is those that are defined by the users of the rpc system this group contains the marshaling procedures for user defined data types and the data types that include pointers a good rpc system should always generate inline marshaling code for every remote call so that the users are relieved of the burden of writing their own marshaling procedures however practically it is difficult to achieve this goal because of the unacceptable large amounts of code that may have to be generated for marshaling all possible data types here the quiz attempt the quiz and give the answer pause the video here is the answer any remote procedure call involves both the client and a server process the answer is c pause the video and answer the second quiz reply message has different format compared to call message the answer is b that is true here are the references thank you